Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is you're watching this. It's some good education news from the Utah Education Network. I'm Danny Sloan. I'm an instructional technology trainer here at UEN. In this show, we're going to be sharing some good news from what's happening in education in Utah. To start the show off, we have some good news of our own. Katie Blunt has joined our team of technology trainers. Before joining UEN, she was a technology trainer in the Canyon School District for 11 years. She was a sixth grade teacher in the Jordan School District for eight years. And you might know her from her time as USEP president. Now, she is not just an amazing ed tech. She also loves filmmaking and is a singer in a local swing band. To start things off right, Katie is going to be sharing the education news with you. Take it away, Katie. Thanks, Danny. I'm super excited to be here at UEN. Now, to kick off this third episode of SGEN, we reached out to the community to find some good news stories. School is back in session, and it looks a little bit different for everyone. School districts across Utah are approaching school this fall in many different ways. For Salt Lake School District, they'll be doing all their learning remotely. Teachers met with students and parents to check out devices and get ready for this new school year. Everyone wore masks and followed protocol for a smooth and safe meeting. Davis School District is taking steps to reduce the number of students in the school buildings by offering a hybrid model for learning. Superintendent Nui welcomed teachers back and encouraged them to create new opportunities while being flexible during our current reality. It was an all hands on deck operation to distribute the crucial personal protective equipment or PPE to schools in Utah. The Utah State Board of Education appreciated the help from both Jordan and Granite School Districts. The Valley View PTA in Bountiful is stepping up and helping to make changes in our schools too. Instead of providing funding for buses to field trips, this PTA is creating virtual field trip experiences for students by creating videos with student hosts. As if a global pandemic wasn't enough, St. George residents dealt with severe storms and flash flooding in August. Campus crews worked all night to clean up buildings and surrounding grounds to make sure students were able to come to campus safely for the first day back to class. Dixie State University Trailblazers also came together as a community to donate and collect food and supplies for those who were affected. And last but not least, we really can't go much further without taking a moment to stop and say a heartfelt thank you, teachers. We know you've been asked to go above and beyond this year. We see you and the support staff, administrators, custodians, the list goes on and on and we thank you. Here at UEN, we have launched a program called Reimagine Teaching. We're bringing together the very best of the best when it comes to professional learning to help teachers learn the critical skills to support hybrid and remote learning models. The best part? Once teachers complete four hours of professional learning, they've qualified for a $200 Amazon gift card. So teachers, head to reimagine.uen.org to sign up and get started today. Good things are happening in education at all levels here in Utah. Today, we have a special guest joining us from the governor's office. That's right, Tammy Piper, the Governor's Education Advisor, is here to share some good education news. Welcome, Tammy. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. 
Oh, we're so excited you're able to join us on SGEN. <laughs> well, let's start off by having you tell us a little about yourself. What is your background as an educator? So I was a non-traditional student returning to Utah State University to get a degree in special education. I graduated with three kids in elementary school and a husband who had just finished his master's program. Uh, so my degrees in special education, I taught for a year in middle school and in elementary school and then went into early intervention, uh, working with parents of uh, babies and toddlers with visual impairments. Uh, I did that for a few years and then moved to Logan School District, where I was the director of their foundation and raised money for uh, classrooms and teachers. And from there, I went to Utah State University and taught as a clinical instructor there and now working for the governor. What does your work as the governor's education advisor entail? So my main job is to help the governor connect with what's happening in public education and in higher education. I'm a liaison uh, with those entities. Also uh, work with community members. We have a lot of civic and community and business groups to support education. And so I also connect with them uh, in conjunction with some of the work I do with the governor. In Utah, a lot of your viewers will, will know that the governor is not directly in charge of public education. We have a lot to say over higher education, but not public education. And yet it's his number one budget priority. And, uh, and so we, we, we are involved in as many ways as we can. We, we visit schools across the state. That's our favorite thing to do. When, is the big thing I'm missing right now during the pandemic is taking the governor out into schools. Uh, but that is my job is to get him into schools, to get him with the groups, to get him with teacher groups. We have focus groups with teachers so that he can better understand what the needs of our teachers are, what the needs of our schools are, and do what he can through his budget proposals and working with legislators to make that happen. That's fantastic. Well, so as we continue to work through teaching and learning during a pandemic, <laughs> what are some ways that the state is supporting educators? So from our perspective, in particular, the governor's office, because again, we don't have direct purview or authority over public education, but we do have ways that we can support through distributing PPE and also through some funding that has come to our office. A lot of your viewers will uh, recognize the CARES Act and the funding that's come through the CARES Act. Uh, there was about $68 million that came through the CARES Act that went directly to school districts. The governor's office, we received an additional $29 million and could use that for whatever we wanted. Well, we decided to use all of it for public education and we distributed those funds directly to school districts with the instructions that we wanted them to focus on our most vulnerable students, those who had probably suffered the most during the loss of instructional time in the spring. And also we wanted school districts to focus on social and emotional learning. And I'm going to give you just a couple of examples of how districts are spending those funds. They're called GEAR funds, Governor Education Enhancements, something or other funds, <laughs> uh, GEAR for short. But um, <clears throat> some of the grants that we funded through those GEAR funds were um, to provide supplemental, uh, supplementary academic support. So summer bridge programs and to pay for the personnel that were doing summer bridge programs, to pay for um, new staff uh, instructors, paraeducators, social workers, guidance counselors. That's something we focused on heavily over the last couple of years, our mental health supports. Uh, purchasing some curricular supports like uh, ESL programs. Technology, a lot of districts use that for technology and uh, contracting for mental health supports. So that's a way that districts receive extra funding from our office, directly from our office, to pay for some of these things. Well, you mentioned um, social emotional learning a little bit already. And from what I understand, you've been very heavily involved in promoting that um, as, you know, it's something that the schools have needed anyway. And then particularly you add in COVID-19 and the extra stresses on their families and on their educations. Um, is there anything more you'd like to say about social emotional learning in the schools? Sure. About a year and a half ago, I attended a conference learning about SCL and it was like my, I had a completely different perspective because people think of SEL and they think, oh yeah, those squishy little happy things that you do and you're teaching kids to be nice and like themselves. But it's like, no, no, no. There's this huge connection between social emotional learning and academic achievement. 
And those are the kind of things that policymakers are looking at is academic achievement. Well, SEL gets to academic achievement. You mentioned that you have the unique opportunity to observe good things happening in education across the state. And although you haven't been able to be in schools physically recently, I'm sure you still get all sorts of information and news about the great things happening. And since this is some good education news, we are hoping you could share maybe some examples of just the great things that are happening in Utah schools right now. Sure. You know, and this is a time when you'll have critics that say, how can you be talking about these positive things? The world is on fire and everything's awful. It's like, yeah, the world is on fire and some things are awful, but everything isn't awful. And especially as has always been the case in public education, especially in Utah, there are millions of good things happening and we see it all the time. I'll give you a few examples and I'll actually read to you a couple of examples I shared in a press conference a couple of weeks ago. So we just heard a couple of days ago about this teacher in Davis School District. He's a seventh grade math teacher who before school started went and visited every single one of his students. And so that's probably over what, 100, 120 students that he may have over the course of a day. There's not a better thing that could happen for these seventh grade students than to have their math teacher come and visit them and and connect with them and give them really some assurance that everything was going to be great. We had uh, another, another, I talked to another parent who she opted for online instruction for her son in Alpine District. And so some of the students were going to be in class and some online and she kind of worried about her son missing out then on that interaction. So just, this teacher went, did home visits with, with this young third grader made sure to connect with him and has continued to make sure that he feels connected to that classroom. I talked to with a charter school director and uh, an administrator and she said, she, she said, we're kind of a low tech school. We do a lot of hands-on experiential learning, but when things started to turn and we had to go to online instructor, instruction, she said, my teachers, they all just all of a sudden dug in and became experts in, in Google and technology and learned how to take videos and share them. And they've been collaborating with each other in a way that we've really never seen them collaborate before. And she said, it's like just been the most exciting thing. And so we're seeing that all over the state. So in the midst of the gloom and doom and the apprehension and the fear, we have teachers leading the way as they always have and setting really a better example for us as community members on how we can support them in their work to support our students to make education just fantastic in the state of Utah. Lots of really good news. Tammy Pfeiffer, it has been amazing to talk with you today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on SGEN to share some good education news. Thank you. Thank you. Here at Some Good Education News, we're not just sharing good news, we're sharing good tech. Danny is back with us to share some good tech. This year, teachers are using all kinds of creative ways to connect with their students. One way to integrate technology and connect with your students is using Bitmojis. I have an e- But Danny, you don't have to use Bitmojis or have a Bitmoji classroom to be a good teacher. Katie, you're totally right. This is just one fun, creative way to connect with your students. And if you and your Bitmoji are okay with that, I kind of like to continue teaching how to do this. We're cool. Continue. Thanks. The first step is to download the Bitmoji app on your smartphone or tablet. Then you'll create an account and make a Bitmoji that looks like you. Pro tip here, you could have your significant other or your kids design it for you. Next, using Chrome, you'll go to the Chrome web store and add the Bitmoji extension. You can see mine up here in the corner. I click on that and then type in something like reading and ta-da! I right click, copy my image, and I can paste in my Bitmoji wherever I'd like to. Enjoy! Next up, our special guest meteorologist is standing by for the current Utah weather forecast. Well, thank you, Danny. This is the governor of the great state of Utah, Gary Herbert. My opportunity is to tell you about the weather forecast. And let me just tell you, we're just like Camelot. The weather is always perfect in Utah. 
It might be sunny and blue skies out there for golf and tennis. It might be rainy and gloomy for those who want to go out and go fishing or duck hunting. It might be snow on the ground if you want to go skiing. But whatever it is, uh, it's a perfect day for you. So take a look outside. You'll see the weather forecast, which is just what I'm predicting. Perfect weather may be different, but it'd be perfect a day for you to go out and, and have a great time looking at the vistas and venues and wonders of Utah. So good luck. Great weather for you in the forecast. Back to you, Danny. Thank you, Governor Herbert. Clearly, Katie, you're anxious to take the show over. I'm happy to hand it over to you. Take it away. Thanks, Danny. I'm excited to be part of the UEN team and to share more good education news with you. And for more education news stories, follow the UEN Homeroom Podcast. If you know any stories that we can share, post them via social media using the hashtag UEN Good News or tag our social media profiles. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay kind, and keep learning.